Welcome to Electron Line. Next, we're going to review division of fractions. And there's one main rule we have to take into account. When we divide by a fraction, we get the same result when we multiply by its inverse. For example, here we have the fraction 3 fifths divided by 2 sevenths. Well, that is the same as 3 fifths multiplied times the inverse of this fraction, which is 7 divided by 2. Now we apply the same rules as the multiplication rules for fractions. We multiply the numerators together. 3 times 7 is 21. We multiply the denominators together. 5 times 2 is 10. Notice here we're going to do the same thing, but we have some signs in there. The signs for dividing by fractions are exactly the same as the signs for multiplying by fractions. When there's only one negative sign, the result will be negative. When there's two negative signs, the result will be positive. Or if there's multiple fractions, you're multiplying and dividing. If there's three or five or seven negative signs, the answer is negative. If there's two, four, six, or eight negative signs, the answer is positive. If there's an odd number of negative signs, the answer is negative. An even number of negative signs, the answer is positive. Since there are two negative signs here, the answer will indeed be positive. So we can just ignore the negative signs. And this we can now write as 3 divided by 4 multiplied times the inverse of that, which is 7 divided by 9. Notice that the negative times the negative gives me a positive. Now you can see that the 3 and the 9 can be divided by the same number. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And this becomes 1 times 7 in the numerator divided by 4 times 3, which is 12 in the denominator. Here we have 8 divided by the negative 4 sevenths. We already know that the answer is going to be negative. But what do we do with the 8? Well, the 8 is like 8 divided by 1. So this can be written as 8 divided by 1 divided by negative 4 over 7. Now this is equal to 8 divided by 1 multiplied times the inverse of that, which would be a negative 7 over 4. Now we can simply write this as 8 times a negative 7 or a minus 56 divided by 1 times 4. Actually, now that I think about it, I should have noticed that I can simplify before I multiply. I have an 8 here, I have a 4 there. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And so simply now we get 2 times a negative 7, which is negative 14, over 1 times 1, which is 1. And that can be simplified as simply a negative 14. Now on the right side here, notice that we have some complications. The left fraction is some, somewhat complicated. We have to simplify these first before we can actually do the division, or in essence, do the multiplication by, of course, taking the inverse of the second fraction. So we have to simplify this. Notice we have a 2 times a negative 3. That becomes a negative 6 plus 4 divided by 12. Now we're going to multiply this times the inverse of this fraction. Remember, dividing is the same as multiplying by the inverse. That's multiply times 4 divided by 3. Now here you might be tempted to look at the left fraction here and say, oh, I have a 6 here, I have a 12 here, I'm going to go ahead and simplify that. But you cannot do that. Whenever there is an addition or subtraction between the two elements in the numerator, here are the two terms, you have a minus 6 plus 4, you first have to simplify this before you can start reducing. So instead of trying to reduce that, that would be incorrect, that would give you a wrong answer. You have to do this instead first. Minus 6 plus 4 is a minus 2 divided by 12 multiplied times 4 divided by 3. Now you can go ahead and start simplifying because all you have now is a multiplication. There's no addition or subtraction left. We have a 2 and a 12 there. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And we have a 4 and a 6. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now we can go ahead and do the multiplication. Negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2, divided by 3 times 3, which is a 9. The answer then is negative 2 nines. On the next one here, notice we have some exponents. We need to simplify the left fraction first by first taking care of the exponents. 5 squared is 25, minus 3 squared, which is 9, divided by minus 5 plus 3. Minus 5 plus 3, that'll give us a minus 2. And dividing by 2 ninths is the same as multiplying by its inverse, 9 divided by 2. First, we want to simplify by combining these two, 25 minus 9, that would be 16 divided by negative 2, multiplied times 9 divided by 2. And now we can go ahead and simplify because all the additions and subtractions are gone. 
16 and 2, that becomes 8 and 1. And then 8 and 2, that becomes 4 and 1. And this therefore becomes 4 times a 9, that is 36, divided by a negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. And that can simply be written as negative 36. Here, notice we have some absolute value signs to take care of first. So we work out what's inside the absolute value signs first. 2 minus 8, that becomes a minus 6, minus 3 minus 6, which is a minus 3. Notice I kept the absolute value signs there. I first simplify what's inside of them. Divide by minus 9 plus 12, that's divide by plus 3. And divide by fraction, same as multiplying by its inverse, so multiply times a negative 3 over 2. Notice I kept the negative sign there because I don't know yet what this will end up, for, uh, end up as with the negative sign or not. Next, the absolute value of negative 6 is a positive 6, minus the absolute value of a negative 3 is a positive 3, divided by a positive 3, and multiply times the negative 3 over 2. Continuing to simplify, Again, I don't want to divide this 3 by this 3. That would be incorrect because we still have a negative sign there, so you cannot do that. You first have to simplify the numerator. 6 minus 3 becomes 3 divided by 3 times a negative 3 over 2. And of course, 3 divided by 3, that's the same as 1. This becomes 1 times negative 3 over 2. And then using the identity property of multiplication, 1 times anything, you get that anything back. This becomes minus 3 over 2. And that would be the final answer for that problem. Hmm, that's kind of a short negative sign. Let me make it a little bit longer. There we go. And that's how we operate with dividing one fraction by another fraction. Notice the rule always is when we divide by a fraction, we actually multiply by its inverse. And that's how it's done.